So when, when unbelief shows up in your life, do you realize that every person in this room has the authority to say, nope, forgive my unbelief. In Jesus' name, I repent of that. Okay, I'm on. Let's go. Because the devil's going to make you think it's not real. So you take one day off. It's just like the gym. Miss one day at the gym, you'll miss a week. Or five. Yep. I'm serious. If you get into a routine and all of a sudden you take a day off, that one day generally turns to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sometimes forever. Two years. In the spirit, it's the same thing. You read your Bible. All of a sudden, you're connecting with God. You connect with God seven, eight days in a row, and you're so close to God. You're so close to God that our human nature kicks in and says, oh, you can take a day off. You take one day off, it turns into a month. I pray to God you don't die in that month, not because you're not following the law, but because we've got to be connected to the source to live. Or you die. If you're not connected to the source, you die. I drove by three churches today. I wanted to lose my mind. Because I drive by and I see these buildings and I see these big parking lots and I hardly ever see anybody in these parking lots. And I just pray that the fire of God would hit God's people. That they would actually know Him and not know Him number 379 verses 1, 4, and 7. Because we're so good at church culture that we understand the stuff about God, but we don't know God. So we show up to church. Listen, even in this church, it's shocking when people show up asleep. I'm stunned when y'all show up asleep. I'm not against you, just FYI. But I'm shocked when people show up asleep. Church tonight. We don't get here for us. We're here because God sent you for y'all. Thank you, Jesus. And guess what? God always meets us here. Are you ever shocked that God continues to show up in your life? Me and Elijah were listening to the Bible this morning. We listened to like seven or eight chapters, I think. And I'm like, God is here. Sometimes I'm blown away because I forget. Oh, God's here. What? <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> You're here right now? And guess what? He's here right now. He's here with you right now, Jamie. He loves you more than you could ever fathom. He's praying that you don't look, up, look at you, talk about you, and think about you the way you do. He wants you to think, talk, and look at you the way he looks at you. And when you do that... Yeah, you can cry right now, but soon you're going to laugh. <laughs> How many in this room know John 3.16? Most people, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him, that whoever believes in him, that whoever believes in him, that whoever believes in him. That... See, it's the most quoted scripture maybe in the history of humankind. Tim Tebow wore it on his face. It was got Googled like a billion times. That whoever believes in Whoever places their trust in Him. Whoever repents and places their trust their entire life. What did the rich young ruler say? What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? See, He, he came out with His, with his resume. I've kept all of the commandments since I was little. I've done so good. Always went to church. Only listened to worship music. I don't know what he did. I wasn't there. Jesus doesn't want your legalistic ways about trying to love him. He wants you. So sell everything you have. Just sell everything you have. He didn't ask for a little bit. He asked for a lot. He asked for everything. And if we're not willing to give up everything, 
What happened to the rich young ruler? What happened? He walked away. Do you remember when you hear about him in the end of the Bible? You don't. You don't ever hear from him again. He wasn't willing to sell and give up everything, so he walked away. I am begging you, give everything you have to Jesus. Every single thing. It is the only thing that matters. Every thought that pops into your head. You don't have to think it if it's not from God. You don't have to think it. Give your job to God. I know you're great at your job and you're making good money, whatever. Who cares? You can't take it with you. You will not get... Filter. Here we go. If you struggle with drugs or medicine, you don't have to be on that. God's the only drug you'll ever need. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That is. Yeah. I have never been drunk, mm. but I will tell you this. I have never felt anything like the presence of God. Mm. Matter of fact, one of the things Joe said, probably like the third or fourth time he came to church, Joe's like, whoa. I have never experienced anything like this. And Joe's told me some of the stuff he's done. A favorite, one of my favorite things you said. You were just like, this is like, this is uncomparable. Incomparable. English words are hard for me. So who needs healing in this room? Physical healing? Emotional healing? All right, if that's you, stand up.